So the thing that helps with uh, buildups, you can't just like, for instance, if I bring the cutoff all the way to the top, you can't just have that playing all the time. It's meant to build up, right? So if I just come on Z that shit, I personally prefer when it starts low like this, and then you open the cutoff, the closer it gets towards the drop. So that sounds a lot different to right here. Right? And what I like to do, I used to like draw it in like this and do it all manually and stuff. And I would just waste so much time trying to make like an organic sounding curve. And what I do now is I use the bend feature a lot. So if I just go back here, if I just drew this in again, you know, like this, for example, instead of like manually putting in all these little dots, it gets like time consuming, right? So I just draw a straight line and then I press option on a Mac, like alt, and then the bend feature comes in. And then you can just literally just bend this to your liking. It just makes things so quick and easy and simple. Wish I knew this a long time ago. But anyways, usually there's like an op involved too. So if I solo the op here. I'll unfreeze this quickly. Velocity also helps with a lot with ops. If all of these notes were the same velocity, very robotic. It sounds like RTD2 made this. That's not what we want, especially if you're going for like a more organic genre, which is kind of like what I make. And what I usually end up doing is I just, just manually go like this, just at random, you know? You can also just highlight certain notes that you want. Kill some time, make things fly by easier, quicker. One eternity later. That sounds a lot more human, organic, because every single note is played at a different volume. And as you can see, I've done a similar thing with the cutoff here. The cutoff starts low. And then towards the end of the buildup, you open it up. You want to be careful about opening it up too far. Because then, you know, it depends on what kind of genre, what kind of style you're going for, obviously. But for me, I like to not open it up all the way. And this also depends on like what kind of preset you have. Like it just sounds horrible with this kind of preset. And yeah, like once again, you can't just, it sounds real shit if you don't fuck with the cutoff, especially in a build up. You want to start off low and then build it up to this point. And then usually what I like to do, I prefer when the drop comes in, have the cutoff low again. Yeah, the, excuse my drop, it fucking sucks. I haven't worked on the drop at all. And I've literally just made like a, a skeleton of a song. Oh guys, if you wanna follow me on Instagram, I'll link it in the bio and uh, yeah, you can have a look. This is a personal page and it's where I'm gonna be posting my tunes when they're mixed and mastered. We have the Opsia and we have the Rhythm Synth. What I like to do, say these are the only two like the VSTs that we're using, the only two like synths that we're using. What I would do is I'd come on G which groups them together. And then I put like an EQ on it and I'll just choose anything here, any kind of shape. So if I fuck with the frequency in real time, these move together. And what I like to do, the same with like the cutoff filter, I like to use the EQ in a similar kind of fashion. So if I do that straight line again, I don't want to go too far again. And I use the bend feature and I do something like this. So all these synths and ops, the EQ starts low and then it builds up higher and higher as we get towards the buildup. And by the time it gets to the actual drop, I drop the EQ down back to low. It's just like gives it a very nice contrast. You can hear the EQ start to go higher and higher. Oops, so where's the drop? The drop's around here. So I'm gonna make this high all the way up until the drop. And you know, you don't have to do this just on the, the ops and the, and the synths. What you could do as well is put it on the master, put an EQ on the master, like as if like a DJ would do if he was playing live. Let's say from here 
all the way up to until the drop. Do the bend feature. Boom. Probably going to bend this up like this. If I left the high EQ on at the drop, it would sound fucking awful. It wouldn't be a drop, right? You see what I'm saying? That's why I bring the EQ all the way down before the drop. To make your build up pump and really be epic, like a riser, you can either make your own riser or you can just get a sample like what I've done here. And usually there is like some kind of like percussion buildup. I've just used like a snare roll here. As you can see by the waveform, it's already like structured in a way that we want from soft to loud. And a lot of the times, you know, if you get these samples of splice or something, the people who upload it kind of make it difficult for you. You know, sometimes they won't be very long. They'll be short like this. And what I do to combat that Shout out to my brother, he showed me this the other day. I would just, you know, duplicate this and then bring down the gain on the one that you've duplicated so it fits in almost snug as if like this was like one long thing, you know? Barely even noticeable. I mean, I did a really shit job, like it, it kind of is noticeable, but you can make it less noticeable if you actually Take your time in getting like the perfect transitions. You see? It's like it was just long the whole time. Don't forget about side chaining. Side chaining also can make your your intro pop. You just want to be real careful about side chaining. Don't side chain everything. I used to make this mistake. I used to side side chain everything to my kick. Like literally everything. And I, and then by the time I knew it, I blinked and like my tr my track was just fucking toast. It was toast, like, don't sidechain everything, only sidechain the lows, you know, like the sub. For instance, this rhythm here, I've sidechained it to the kick. To give it that, like, pumping effect, you know, so every time the kick comes in, the compressor, the sidechain picks it up. Every time the kick comes in, makes this specific MIDI track duck in volume so that the kick can come through more. What also sounds good on the buildup especially the ops and the synths is a combination of reverb and delay. If you remember, I grouped the synths and I grouped the ops. So this group right here is controlling all of them. Just like automating the cutoff, I'm gonna do the same thing with the reverb and delay. You can use the stock reverb in Ableton. Um, I use a different plugin just because I have it, you know, like it doesn't really, doesn't even make a difference at all. It's not what you got, it's how you use it, right? So I usually like pump up the decay to, you don't want to pump it up too much because then things just get like chaotic and so messy. The mix is the big one right here. So now we're controlling the mix of this group, which is controlling all the synths and the ops. I'm going to do another straight line, automate this cut in, use the bend, and I'll bring that down to about there. And you don't want any reverb in the drop, but it is always nice to have like a tail at the end. So it doesn't just stop abruptly. So here you wouldn't really notice anything, but as we get closer and closer towards the end of the buildup, So I'm going to add on to delay. You can use normal delay or ping delay, or you can just use delay in your VST. Like Serum, I'm using Serum. I could just pump it in the VST. But since we're doing like, so I'm just going to find a delay. I like to use ping, but I use normal delay sometimes. I usually tend to bring the feedback down a bit around there. And we're going to start with the dry weight all the way at the bottom. Just right now, the dry weight is a big one. I'm going to make another curve here and I might bring this down to a less intense level and just like the reverb cut off everything 
And just like the reverb, I like to leave a tail at the end. It makes things flow. So on these synths, we have automated the cutoff, the frequency, the reverb, and the delay. Let's listen to what it sounds like. The full build up, here it is. So yeah guys, this, this is just a short video about how to make your intros bump happy producing.